Okay, so let's dive in. There's this really fascinating fact to start us off. Henri Kwanda, the guy Bucharest's main airport is named after now, he actually built the world's first jet-propelled aircraft way back. But here's the kicker. It didn't exactly soar. Mm. Uh, it crashed on its very first flight. Yeah, the maiden flight. Mm -hmm. It was, well, a failure in the classic sense, but incredibly important as it turned out. So in this deep dive, we're looking at Henri Kwanda's life using insights from Henri Kwanda, pioneer of flight and fluid dynamics. Mm -hmm. We really want to explore not just his inventions, which were amazing, but also the, you know, the sheer persistence behind it all. Absolutely. We're aiming to unpack those key moments, the insights that really defined his journey as an innovator. Exactly. Uncover that spirit. And his story, it wasn't straightforward, was it? Even yeah. from the start, there was this tension. He came from a pretty prominent Romanian family. His dad was a general, also mass professor. So that expectation. On military, <laughs> definitely a military career path laid out for him. Right. But what's interesting, and you see this in the source material, is this early pull he felt. This fascination, yeah, with the air, with flight. Even while he was uh, fulfilling those military duties, his mind was elsewhere. Totally. Thinking about how flight worked, the secrets of the air. And that passion, that inventor's itch, it eventually won out over the expectations. He made that break, didn't he? Left the military path to chase invention. That takes guts. It really does. A conscious choice for a very uncertain path. The source highlights how his inventive drive just couldn't be... Uh, contained by that structured military life. It definitely set the scene for what came next. Which took him to Paris. Early 20th century Paris was just buzzing with aviation fever. The place to be if you were into flying machines. And that's where he built the Kawanda 1910. Now think about this. The very first aircraft designed with jet propulsion. I mean, propeller planes were still pretty new, still being figured out. Exactly. And he just leaps ahead to this idea of jet power. Okay, a basic version, but still. Yep. Jet power, the sheer audacity of it back then is... Wow. It really makes you think about the mindset required, doesn't it? To ignore the conventional path, the safer bets, and go for something so radical, so unproven. Courage is the word. The source points that out building and trying to fly something based on completely new tech. He was definitely challenging everything. And that first flight? Well, uh, it didn't go well. No. Memorable, but not in a good way. It apparently became uncontrollable, crashed, burst into flames. He got out, but got burned. You can just imagine watching your big idea literally go up in smoke like that. The disappointment must have been immense. But this is where the story takes that incredible turn we mentioned at the start. Right, because out of that fiery wreck came this, this crucial observation. He noticed something about the flames. Yeah, he saw how the flames from the engine weren't just shooting straight back. They seemed to hug the fuselage cling to the surface. Like they were being drawn towards the body of the plane. Exactly. And that wasn't just some random effect of the fire. That was his first glimpse of a fundamental principle. The Kawanda effect. Named after him, obviously. This idea that a jet of fluid air, in this mm -hmm. case, or the hot gases, tends to follow a nearby curved surface. So this disastrous crash, this failure, accidentally leads him to his biggest scientific discovery. It's kind of paradoxical, isn't it? It really is. It shows how insight can come from unexpected places, even failure. But um, the world wasn't exactly ready to cheer him on immediately. No, not at all. After that spectacular crash, the scientific community was uh, pretty dismissive of his ideas. Funding dried up. Opportunities vanished. He faced some serious headwinds. It sounds like he spent years pretty isolated, working in obscurity almost. That's the picture painted, yes. Mm -hmm. His vision wasn't immediately accepted. But he didn't give up. He just kept going, driven by his own belief. That level of conviction when everyone else doubts you that's something else. Absolutely. The source suggests this period really forged his determination. It speaks volumes about that inner drive, you know, yeah. the motivation that keeps innovators going, even without outside applause. He just kept tinkering, kept questioning, kept experimenting. Pushing those boundaries. And incredibly, his mind wasn't just on planes. He ended up with over 250 patents. Which is just staggering. And in all sorts of areas. Like he designed these lens-shaped flying saucer type things. Vertical takeoff. Decades before that became a sci-fi staple. It shows a mind that wasn't fenced in, right? Constantly exploring. He worked on new building materials. Devices for finding liquids underground water. Oil. Which has huge implications, obviously. Even systems for offshore oil drilling. 
real diverse stuff. And the Kawanda effect itself, that discovery from the yeah. crash, its applications are everywhere now. Oh, absolutely. Modern aircraft design, yes, but also things like uh, ventilation systems, using it to direct airflow efficiently. And get this, it was even used in the braking system for the Apollo lunar module. Isn't that amazing? From a plane crash in 1910 to landing on the moon, it shows how fundamental principles can pop up in the most unexpected ways. Science is weird like that sometimes. It certainly has its twists and turns. Now, his story isn't totally straightforward. There was some controversy later on, right? Yes, in the 1950s, he made some claims about um, inventing the jet engine itself which caused a bit of debate. Right. His memories perhaps didn't quite line up perfectly with the established timelines, which led to some skepticism. It's a good reminder that history, especially the history of invention, can be complex. There can be different perspectives. But the source does stress that despite those debates, his actual documented contributions were undeniable. Absolutely. And they eventually earned him significant international recognition. Yeah, the honors piled up. UNESCO, the French government, Britain's Royal Aeronautical Society, they all recognized his work. And of course, back home in Romania, having the main international airport in Bucharest, named Henri Kawande Airport, that's a lasting tribute. Definitely seals his legacy there. He actually returned to Romania later in life. He got involved in scientific research there, became director of an institute. And importantly, inspired younger generations, right? Yes. His whole life story became this powerful example of resilience how to keep going despite setbacks, despite the doubters. It's a long game, innovation. It really makes you think, reflecting on his journey, how many good ideas, maybe even world-changing ideas, just wither because someone was afraid of failing at the start. Or afraid of being dismissed. Yeah. His life feels like a challenge to that fear, doesn't it? A call to follow your conviction. The source basically frames it that way. An invitation to trust your vision, even when things get tough, and that adversity. Sometimes it's actually the fuel. It can push you harder, make you think differently. Exactly. It's not always a roadblock. Sometimes it's a detour that leads somewhere even more interesting. And those failures, they're not endpoints. They're just data, learning experiences, essential steps, maybe. His story is a perfect illustration of that. He took the potential disaster of that crash and turned it into a fundamental principle. Like the air he studied, his spirit was resilient. So I guess the big takeaway is that the world really is shaped by people who dare to push limits, who don't accept impossible as the final answer. Kawanda certainly fits that bill. And his life is, well, it's an encouragement for all of us, for you listening. Embrace that curiosity you have. Build up that resilience for when things don't go smoothly. And uh, don't underestimate your own imagination. Kawanda definitely didn't. So here's a final thought to leave you with. Think about a time, maybe recently, maybe long ago, when you had an idea and it was met with doubt. Maybe your own doubt, maybe someone else's. What if you'd push through with that same relentless vision Kawanda had? What seemingly impossible sky may you have set alight? 